There it is. So that's a, a blue oxide layer. People don't really understand what a blacksmith is. They just assume that all I do is sit around and make knives. As soon as you've heated up some metal and banged it around and made something even marginally useful, you're a blacksmith. 90% of what we do is just heating it up and hitting it with a hammer. Pretty much the rule once this thing gets fired up is everything is hot. This is the arduous part. Oops, it's getting very hot. This all day long. Sometimes you really just need a bigger hammer. So if you walk into a commercial kitchen at a nice big restaurant, what are they using? There's so much you can do with 10 inch carbon steel skillet. It can replace 90% of what you have in your kitchen right now. You're good forever. You don't have to buy any more skillets. My name is Tristan Godwin and I'm a blacksmith. So the first thing we need to do is we've decided that we need to cut out a 12 inch circle. So I've got that programmed up into the computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive this machine using this wireless keyboard here. And this steel that we use, this is 12 gauge, which is a thickness. It's not so thin that it transfers heat too quickly and burns, and it's thick enough that it doesn't warp and do things like that. And this is a, a form of mild carbon steel. So 0.3 of 1% of carbon in it, which makes it malleable. That's what allows us to basically hammer it out, to form it into shape, to use the press on it. And it's just the perfect material for cooking on as well. It holds the seasoning, and that's the most important part. Giving our customers a really good finish that they can cook on. It's like magic. <laughs> so that makes our lives so much simpler. So now we're gonna cut out a couple more of these and these are gonna turn into a couple of hybrid pans that we're gonna make today. So we'll take these and head over to the press and start working on that. I had a welder that I had purchased just because I'd watched some YouTube videos on welding. I discovered that I love metalwork and started heating things up and shaping it. And uh, not long after I started just messing around, I built my first skillet and it's very crude, but it got the job done. And I took it home and everyone would ask me, where did you get that? Like, well, I, I made it actually. I built up this metalworking shop with my dad and it just seemed like the next step was, hey, let's make some of these skillets that everybody says they love so much and see if they're willing to buy them. And they are. <laughs> so that's where we are now is, is making these skillets and other cookwares. We've cut these out with a plasma cutter and they've been cut to a specific size. This is gonna be a 10 inch round skillet. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on a blank from below. So that's gonna be the cooking surface size when this skillet is finished. So now we need the bottom to press it into. So we're gonna set this on the bottom. This is the arduous part. So you can see the steel starting to go down where that puck is in the middle. And this gets a little tougher to do, obviously. Right before it pops down into that bottom is when we wanna stop. That means we've reached our full depth of the skillet. All right, so there we have the beginnings of a 10 inch round skillet. We're actually in the works in getting a hydraulic press. It's being built right over here that's gonna make this much simpler for us. It's electric hydraulic, meaning I hit a foot pedal and it goes down and I don't have to do quite as much as this all day long. All right. The CNC plasma cutter, hydraulic press, those are the two biggest pieces of technology that we use here. For the most part, everything else is the same way as you'd be doing it hundreds of years ago. So the next step, now that we've done the initial pressing on these skillets, is we need to take care of these wrinkles. So you can see these form as we press them out. So it's always good though, this gets a little noisy to work some ear protection. We call all these little marks birthmarks because they're just part of the process of this pan being born. Now that's a round skillet, so that's basically done before it goes to have the edges ground and go off for finishing. Now we're gonna work on what will be a hybrid style pan, which is half polygon and half round. All right, that one's ready for be pressed a second time now. We want to create something that is a heritage item, something that you can use your entire life and leave to your children. And everyone 
you know, literally fought over who would get like grandma's cast iron. So that's why we started making the skillets. All right, so now that we've got those hammered out, we got to do a second press on what are going to be a hybrid pan because they get a polygon shape first and then they get hammered again. So we're going to go ahead and set up to press them into that octagon shape now. And this is the form that we actually welded up to be able to press these into. So that's the new shape we have. And now we have to hammer those wrinkles out. You can see that they're not totally the same, even though we press them into the exact same form. And that's what's really cool about our pans. It's not everyone is the same. They're unique in their own way. I think that's what people really enjoy about them. I, I know I do. And that's why we make these. We want them to be different. We want people to be able to enjoy their skillet and have it for their entire life and just be able to see this as a piece of art as well as a piece of everyday cookware in their home. It's so versatile. You can use it in the barbecue, you know, on a grill, in a smoker, in the oven, on the stove, induction, glass top, gas. You can use it anywhere. You can use it over an open fire while you're camping. So we wanted something that was versatile, something that we personally loved and that we knew that we could perfect because we know how it should work. So we're gonna go ahead and hammer out these wrinkles here, straighten these out. You know, you never trust a skinny cook. Well, you never trust a blacksmith with clean hands either. So it's hot, it's dirty, and it's fun. And it's just, it's what I live for. And what this hybrid does is, like I mentioned, we have the saute side, so it's easy to flip your vegetables or whatever you're frying in here. And at the same time, it's gonna leave these pour spouts on either side. All right, so now that we've got these hybrid pans pressed, we actually need to do some grinding on these. And right now they kind of have this scalloped area here and we like to make that flat. Just makes it look really nice. It doesn't serve any function by being there. I've just knocked off these scalloped edges and you can see the difference between the two and it's, it's pretty pronounced. And the reason we do this is because that extra little piece up here doesn't add any function to the pan. And when we take it off, it looks beautiful and it also helps to create a better pouring spot while you're cooking. So just that little bit of grinding can make a huge difference in the beauty of the pan. So now we're going to do some finish grinding here and smooth out all these edges. And we're gonna do that using this Fordham grinder. It's got a cool little foot pedal down here. Makes things a lot easier for us. And all I'm really looking to do is just slightly radius the tops of these. I'm not taking a lot of material while I'm doing this, just making them feel really nice to the touch. And so you'll notice again, I'm not wearing gloves, which helps to be able to just get your hands a little dirty and touch those edges. I posted something on Instagram the other day where I walked into a thrift store and there were literally like 70 scratched up, non-usable Teflon and ceramic pans. And I thought to myself like, all of these pans were consumed by these people and they all just went out and bought another one to replace this. And they could have bought one 10 inch carbon steel skillet and had it the rest of their lives. But instead they think, oh, I don't know if I wanna make an investment, but they'll go spend $50 every two years on a new nonstick over at the big box store and then have to toss it out and get another one. Well, no one cares what happened to grandma's Teflon you know, who cares about that? They want to know where her cast iron or her carbon steel went. That's what we're trying to replicate here. We want that heritage quality. All right, so we're gonna make handles for these pans that Tristan's been working on. My name's Bill Godwin, I'm a blacksmith, pan maker, skillet maker, kitchenware maker, what do you want to call it? So the first part we're gonna do is just get these things all heated up. And we usually do three or four handles at a time so that once they're all heated up, when you pull one out and work on it for a minute or so, it cools down. Then you can just throw it back in and another one will be heated up. Pretty much the rule once this thing gets fired up is everything is hot. So we're just putting a few marks on this to start with. So once it's cooled off, it's pretty hard to keep going. So that's why we've got the others heating up now. So the cold forging gets us the shape that we want 
pot foraging, on the other hand, where we do like the handles or the smaller things like that, that's our chance to, when you really want to change the shape of something, like the fullering of the handle, we're really putting a different shape on it. So now that's heated up, got that nice orange glow to it. It moves a lot easier when you put it in, in the fullering tool. And that's it. So we've got our fuller and our reverse fuller at the top for, for comfort. And we've got our hammer marks on here, which are there to just make it nice. All right, so we're just gonna take all the roughness and hard edges off these things now and still leave some of the beautiful marks that we've worked so hard to put on there. So let's see if we can pull that off. Just get all that grungy gray stuff off of there. This is the wire brush. Just gotta be a little careful with it. it. Likes to grab stuff once in a while, and toss it across the room. So, we'll see how it goes. All right. And that's basically it. Wire brushed. So we're gonna go to final sanding now on these. We go to 120 grit, which doesn't seem all that fine, but go much finer than that. And it, it starts leaving the pan so smooth they don't really retain seasoning as well. So there you can see what sanding does. And so you can see the, it actually kind of skips over some of the divots there and kind of leaves you these are some articulations, kind of like on a giraffe. In the season, those will still kind of stand out with sanding. All right, now that we've got everything sanded, ground down, ready to go for handles, the next thing we want to do is take these skillets and set them on this flat surface and spin them around, make sure that the bottom is fairly flat or at least convexed a little bit on the inside. So the first thing we do, this one doesn't move a whole lot, but I can tell it's got a pivot point right over here. So this is really scientific what we do is turn it over and then beat it with a hammer all right that one was simple we need to bend these handles to give them their unique shape so we've got this really high-tech piece of plywood that we've actually cut with a bandsaw to make the shape that we use for our skillet handles. And a lot of the stuff in our shop just relies on brute force. And this is one of those jobs. So we've kind of designed this so that we can just put this handle in all the way to the bottom. Align it, make sure it's straight. And give it a good push. Next step is just get a drill bit in. This is a one quarter inch drill bit for our quarter inch rivets. We're actually gonna drill these out real quick because these are just rough. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and rivet this now. I've got the rivets in place through the holes coming out the backside, and I'm gonna cold rivet these. I just put it over the edge of the anvil here, nice solid surface. All right, so you can see in my hand here that that line is going directly down the handle, right onto the center, and that is good to go. So we've heated up these pans now with nothing on them, just clean, heated them up, and hopefully they've switched colors. Let's see what we get. They turn kind of blue, strangely enough. Some of them turn more purple, cobalt. There it is, so that's a, a blue oxide layer. It is actually a different form of rust than the rust we typically think of as red rust, and it's more stable. It actually protects the metal from rusting. Oop, it's getting very hot. So we'll let those cool down for a minute and get them seasoned. So to be able to cook in a skillet and not have things stick, we have a piece of metal, that's the skillet, and then we have some kind of organic layer above that. And that is what provides non-stick 
qualities. So when you buy a nonstick skillet from the store and they put Teflon or ceramic or something like that, eventually that's gonna wear out. And when that wears out, your pan's gonna stick and there's nothing you can do about it. You throw it away or recycle it, hopefully. Uh, but with carbon steel, if you somehow scratch your seasoning or you ruin it or your friend puts it in the dishwasher, you can clean it really well, wipe it down with a little bit of high smoke point oil, like grapeseed oil, and you can build that seasoning back up and have another layer of non-stick capability and use that pan for the rest of your life. It's, it's not rocket science. You put a little oil in. We use grapeseed oil, and it's a high smoke point oil. Coats the metal, and then when we put it in and reheat it and bring it up to temperature and let it cool down, it's given its a layer of seasoning. In other words, this oil has started to polymerize on the surface of the metal. At this point, strangely enough, that's way too much oil. So now we go through with a dry paper towel and we act like we're trying to wipe all this oil off as much as we can. This is not only the seasoning process, it's the reseasoning process. You can go over the top of the old seasoning, you can strip the old seasoning off and start, literally start all over from scratch. When, when people leave too much oil in there, that's when they get sort of that thick gooey layer on there rather than just a true polymerized nonstick layer. Ready to go back in the oven now. So I'm gonna put this one in. I usually put them right back in the oven. Just about every week, i am you got a phone in one hand and I'm trying to fry eggs one-handed in the other because I'm doing this week's video of, hey look, eggs don't stick, that I can show people at the market. They go like, does this really work? And I break up my phone, like, you got one minute? And I show them the phone and show the eggs sliding around in the pan. And... All right, so we've run a round of seasoning on these pans now. Let's kind of see how they turned out. It's starting to go brown, bronze colored. It's starting to lose that crazy blue color. So you can still see a little bit underneath there. We've got a, sort of a darker color though, certainly. If you walk into a commercial kitchen at a nice big restaurant, what are they using? They use carbon steel. And why do they use that? Because it doesn't wear out. You can use it anywhere that you want to cook, and you know that if anything happens to it, you just reseason it and use it again. All right, so we had a great day today. Uh, my dad and I were able to finish up these three skillets. We've got two hybrids and a 10 inch round. And you'll notice these colors, look at this. Isn't that great? These all came out of the same piece of steel. They just came out differently from the oven after we heat treated them, and this is what you get. It's it's incredible, folks. These are all hand forged. The handles were made by us today. We pressed and hammered out these pans. The whole base, you can see the witness marks on them. And these are ready to sear a steak and cook some veggies for dinner tonight. And lunch tomorrow. And the rest of your life. <laughs> I only do this because I love it. I don't do this for the money. I can make money a, a bevy of different ways, but I just love making things that other people enjoy. You know, most things that we have are consumer items. You might have it for a few years and it won't last. Well, you can use this skillet every single day. You use it to feed your family. You use it to feed your friends. You know, I just want people to understand that there's other ways to be able to cook your food that's healthier and cooler, smarter, less wasteful. And we're one of those avenues. We provide that for people. <laughs>